you'll walk to the supermarket and you'll see all these gang members and I mean you'll be scared because sometimes all of a sudden you could just hear gunshots coming from you don't even know where just have to throw yourself on the floor I mean it's really scary when you have your kids with you and I always tell him I don't want you there never with these people I mean you have to be somebody else someone better he's growing up so fast I feel like crying. <laughs> we have been through so many things. I mean, friends, family, shot, killed because of all these things. So that's why I try to um, keep Roberto like motivated in other things. Oh my, he's so, my son, he, I think he's unique. <laughs> I think I just burned my insides. <laughs> Basically, a foster child is somebody who was unlucky enough to be born to parents who, for one reason or another, are not able to take care of them. And because of that, they go into what's called the system. They travel into the arms of the state, but often they just end up with a stranger, and their lives are dictated by who that stranger is and how they get along with that stranger. And so they're very alone in the world. They are very, I mean, that's, they are alone. A pineapple, two oranges, an avocado, a pear, and an onion. You have so many questions in your mind of how come, how come, how come this happened to me? Why? How come I'm not living with my mother? What happened? You know, you see your friends and, and they have a stable home and you know, your life is up in the air. Like, what's next? It's a rose. He's love. Because love is all you need to make one big family. I would get calls every day, every day that Roberto wasn't paying attention, that Roberto was distracted, that Roberto this and this. After that, when he graduated from fifth grade, he came to Edison. Everything changed. <laughs> he went home and he was like, Mom, there's gonna be this program after school, it's called drama. And I was like, okay, okay. Mom, I really wanna go, okay, you're gonna go. offer a free after-school theater arts program. We don't just hand you the script and say, hey, this is your part, you know, learn these lines, and you know, this is the show. We say, we want to know, as a group, what you think, what you have in common, what you want to talk about, what's important to you. That first 10 weeks, our young people learn how to write a play. And then at the end of that, the next part of the program, which is a 10-week performance program. Now it's about the kids learning all the skills they need to perform the characters that they're cast in. It's really transformation youth development through the vehicle of theater. You know, what really struck me last year with Roberto, he got out on stage after he had performed and he, he said, this is a place where I can be me. I was never here. We got the blocking, the movements of the actors and where they stand on stage, we got casting, which, which is like, you know, casting is like where, I'm not even gonna read this because I'm so intelligent. So they cast me to be a Ranger James, so you gotta cast if you got the right skills. The only reason I got the part, I did the accent. We know who you are, we know what you do. In classroom, if I do the things that are natural to me, it's out of place and I need to sit down or be quiet. Here, I can just be unusual. Those are lies, all lies. My favorites are the teachers. They're really kind. And they give us many, many chances where we should not get it. He would tell me often that people thought he was weird. I don't have a lot of friends because they think I'm crazy. And people tell me that I'm crazy. Through this program, I've seen him make friends and discover his own humor. Well, we're gonna put you back in there if you interrupt me again. 
So his own weirdness at first was actually humor that needed to be expressed. And then when the rest of the class started laughing at his jokes, he said, ah, I got them. Well, you're just being detained right now. You're being not arrested, but just detained. The play is now magical, but it's also about a man who doesn't have enough money to pay for medical bills. So he goes out and hunt foxes. And then the foxes are getting, you know, tired of getting shot at. So while magical, it stayed really close to their condition, their family life. Since you saved Giselle's life, we can accept him into our class. But first we must honor our beloved scary fox, who was taken last week by the hunt. I'm sorry I wasn't able to protect you. Do you know what kind of neighborhood I live in? Just, it's just bad, just all around bad. Yeah, because there's like a lot of deaths. I hear fireworks a lot. But I'm friends with like, mostly gangsters, so I'm, I'm fine with that. And they're pretty nice, if you get to know them. The foster care system focuses on their education, on their safety, on providing them a family setting or a residential setting, but the arts are not considered a priority. And that is one area that we feel is essential for them to have. We take them to the theater, we take them to dance productions, to music performances. If they're interested in pursuing something on their own, it could be sketching, singing, playing an instrument, dancing. We find a scholarship program. It's not easy. We would always be searching for activities that would make her happy or fulfill her. It can be costly and we wouldn't be able to go, so I think that it's a great help. She covers up a lot of anxiety and, and also depression. She was taken out of a therapeutic school and put into a mainstream public school that's basically failing her. They don't understand her, they're not able to discipline her well, they're not, they make her feel badly about herself and then I, I think she probably misbehaves more. And I don't see any of that in these classes. And there's a reason for that. We're all different, right? And we all have a shine inside of us. We don't dance like anyone else in the universe because there's no one else like us in the entire universe. Well, because so many children, they hear, no, they hear, sit in your desk, they say, do this, get this pencil out, not that pencil, this pencil, that it's very regulated. I want her to be able to wake up and say, I am this person, I am important, and I matter. <gasps> balanced, I love it. Well, you got back just in time for balanced. Dancers, take, uh, take it away, Gloria. There's this whole world of humans who get to do all these things, and they get to do it, and it changes the way they think about themselves, and it changes the way they think of their possibilities. Some kids have, are going through tough stuff, and they need something to cheer them up. The arts teaches empathy and discipline and respect and love of self and confidence and, and gets you to fill the world with who you are. And without that, we're not human. And I don't understand sometimes why education cuts the arts first. Arts are like air, like water. Everything you see has been designed by some creative person. Without creativity, what do we have? It's not a one day, oh, Eureka! This child's in dance class, and now they're fine. But it's a slow building of self-esteem, of joy, of creativity, of working at something and being disciplined at something. Just the act of being in an artistic community. <laughs> Once you have family around you, why would you choose the other? 
these kids did not have something like unusual suspects. They can just become another kid in LA, another kid in the streets. And it's not their parents' fault or their family's fault sometimes, it's because they're working hard too. Sometimes, yes, I don't have that, I don't spend that much time with them because I have to, I have to work. It's just be me by myself. Um, his dad is not on the picture at all. In these neighborhoods that we go into, they don't have someone just being like, are you okay? If you don't talk about it, cool, all right. I'm gonna go back up here, but I see you. And I'm glad you're here. Be yourself. Don't contain yourself. Be yourself. Roberto has gotten so many good things from this program. Wanting to help other people, to be all in peace, love each other, like be friends. And I don't know if this program wouldn't be here. I don't know, my son probably, he would be someone else, like hanging out with, this, with the bad guys. I want to do what they're doing. Because it seems really fun to be a teacher. We're not getting funding from the school. Their resources are very, very thin. Without funding, we can't continue to do this amazing work that builds amazing kids. So thank you so much, Find Your Light, for providing the funding that helps make these programs possible. Without that, we can't impact the lives of people like Roberto. We're small and we depend on organizations like Find Your Light who found us. I don't know how you found us, but the fact that you're really shining a light on the reality of this, not some, you know, this is all beautiful and wonderful and everybody's in their tutus. I'm so grateful because if people see, I think that they will open their hearts because they can do so much.